Hey, welcome to LDO Off-Road. I'm Zach Eastwood. So the next project on the Land Cruiser is we're going to do a desmog on the engine. Another thing that people call that is an EGR delete. It's just a way of a, removing the old emissions equipment that is worn out and clogging up the system. And I'm hoping that it will increase some of the performance. If I can just get a little bit more pep out of the engine, I feel like it would really help things out a lot. So I found some instructions to do this on the MUD website, on the MUD forum. And uh, it seemed pretty easy and the instructions were really helpful. It also gave me a parts list. Well, to round up all the various parts, I would have to get them from different suppliers and wander up and down the aisles of Lowe's trying to find the right stuff and uh, as I was looking on the internet I ran across a website called Lerms Customs and he sells a kit and I, in the end I had to pay a little bit more money but it eliminated all the hassle of trying to figure it out myself so I was willing to pay the extra you know 10 or 20 percent and just click buy it and it showed up in the mail and uh, so we're going to start the process and uh, I'm kind of excited to see how it turns out in the end. So here's kind of an overview of what I'm thinking is going to get removed as we follow these instructions. There's a, a pump down in here that's like an air pump. And we'll eliminate this and the hoses that it runs to. There's a vacuum pump here also. Maybe that's a filter. I don't know. Both of these get eliminated. This here, this is the EGR. All this stuff gets eliminated, and then this runs in uh, and connects to the, well, the engine. And uh, this pipe, that gets eliminated, and I believe this that runs over here gets eliminated. So it really will actually get rid of some of this mess and actually make some room in here, and that sounds great to me. So one of the things I'm reading is that in order to remove the uh, the emissions stuff from inside here, it's easiest if you remove the valve cover. So what I also purchased was a new valve cover gasket and some of the seals that you'll find on the bolts that hold the valve cover on. There's seals around there, so I got replacement seals. While I was looking at this, this hose here is seems to be leaking. You can see all this oil residue coming out. I think it's coming through a leak in here. So I got a new one of these. And then on this side, you can see, well, it's kind of dark, I'm sorry, but uh, more oil residue here. So I got a new one of these hoses as well. And uh, I'm hoping that kind of cleans up some stuff and maybe we eliminate some of the oily mess there. <clears throat> this EGR runs down here into the exhaust header. And this is one of the, the hardest uh, to remove. And so we're gonna spray PB Blaster on there and get it soaking ahead of time. Uh, really, we're only about a day ahead of time, but I'm hoping it will help anyway. And so I'm just gonna spray that and look around for other items like that that may need to get removed and that maybe we should go ahead and spray tonight. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is pull off this hose that goes from the air pump, which is here on this pulley. And this hose goes over to the air filter. And the, we're going to take this off, and then there's a cap that goes on here. So next, I need to start working in here. So I'm going to remove this uh, fan duct just to get it out of the way. So 
So now I'm going to take this hose off. It's connected to the air pump to the VSV. Okay, so basically, I think this is called a silencer and it comes off. This is the VSV, I believe. And this is the uh, vacuum solenoid. And all this stuff comes off, including this hose that goes up here and the vacuum pump. So we're just gonna take this off a piece at a time. So I'm just going to spend a minute tracing these vacuum lines just to make sure that I'm capping off all the right ones and keeping all the right ones and getting rid of all the right ones. Okay, so I'm probably just being too cautious. It just looks like all this stuff gets removed. <laughs> anyway, so we're, we're going to remove these three wires here. And then these six hoses that come from all this come up here. This one goes to the EGR right here. That's getting removed later. So we'll, there's a connector in here that got, looks like it got taped up at one point. Probably because there was a leak or something. So I'll just pull that. And then I'll pull these six hoses off of here. Oh, I guess it's five, not, well, there's five on here. Six of one comes up here. Okay, I'm gonna undo these bolts here. So I'm going to remove these hoses from the hard lines. Whew. Boy, that one's going to go in there. There we go. And then these three here. Oh, that one broke. Take these ones off of this end. I don't know if that bracket's helpful or not. I kind of like the fan thing that's in here, but I wonder if it's just I'm going to end up removing it later anyway. Well, for now, I'll just pull these. That one's. That one's all clogged up. There was no vacuum in there anyway. It's all corroded and filled up. Okay, and then this EGR is coming off later. So I'm just gonna pull these two hoses while I'm here. Oh, we'll leave that on there just cause until we're ready to remove that. Oh, whatever. Okay, so these are where all those vacuum lines went into on these hard lines here. And they all need to get capped. So the kit came with these little orange caps. And they just slide on. I'll slide them on just as far as I can get them. So they don't ever come off, I guess. These two came from the EGR up here. They're all corroded and plugged up anyway, but 
put this on there. There you go. So the next step is for me to take this vacuum pump off, which means removing this belt and taking off various bolts. I think I gotta loosen the idler pulley that's over here under the power steering, which is really difficult to get to. I've had to deal with that one before. So the only way I figured out how to do this is to reach down, get the wrench kind of inside the fan shroud, and get it on that pulley there. I think I loosened the idler pulley. Now I should be able to loosen the the screw that moves the idler pulley. But I think I need some light in there. off now oh my goodness so I think what I'll do is I'll loosen the power steering here and I think that'll drop down Okay, so that moved it down. There we go. Ah, got it. Okay, move that over. Man, this is a little freer. And it'll kind of wiggle off of its bracket. That looks like it. There, got it. So I want to get this out without cutting it, so I gotta feed it around the fan. Okay, so in the kit came this new belt, and it skips the air pump and skips the alternator. The alternator already has a belt on it. And this just goes around the crankshaft pulley here, and the power steering and the idler pulley. But, of course I gotta get it around the fan. So I just need to feed it down around the crankshaft there on the bottom. Take it off of this for now. Give me some slack. There. Okay, I'm just gonna get it around the idler pulley now. There. Okay, now it's not so snug. Now I gotta tighten the idler pulley. But first I'm gonna pull this. power steering back where it was. I'm just going to tighten that idler pulley a little bit. 
I get to tighten the pulley bolt. That's what locks it in. Okay, so this is the EGR. This is apparently the hard one to remove. Uh, but all this stuff comes off here. And this bracket. So I just thought I'd see what I can do just to start with. There's a, uh, right here there's like a fitting. Like this nut tightens this uh, this pipe into the fitting that then ties into the exhaust manifold there. So the one that's tied into the exhaust manifold is the one we ultimately want to remove so we can cap it. But I'm kind of wondering if taking this off might get this ho this uh, pipe out of our way, might make the access easier in there. So I'm going to start by just trying to loosen that. That's the biggest crescent wrench I have and it just fits on there. Let's see how this goes. Oh, hey, look at that. So that's loose from there. Now let's undo this bracket. So we get that loose. Maybe we'll just... How is this connected? So this is connected with three bolts. One here, one here, and one here. not very tight. They go into aluminum, so they're probably not supposed to be very tight. Which is something to remember when we go to put these bolts back in. It's going into aluminum, so we don't want to tighten them down too much so we don't strip anything out. So, look at this. That is gunky in there. That comes off. That, look at that. I gotta avoid the throttle cable here. Hold on. Oh, look at that nastiness. Needs to get cleaned in there. Look at that. Ugh. Okay, so this would be next. I'm expecting that to need uh, lots of PB blaster. So I It'd be nice if I had a socket to fit on that. Look at that. Inch and a quarter. Don't ask me why I had an inch and a quarter socket. I don't know. Yeah, that's not moving yet. That needs more PV blaster. Okay, we're gonna try to take this fitting off of here, off the exhaust manifold. And I sprayed it yesterday a couple times with PV blaster, sprayed it again this morning. And I'm going to try my impact. I've just got a battery powered impact here. I'm going to see what happens. So it is turning slowly. Uh, slow, but it is turning. I just said that twice. This is smelling kind of funny. I think I'll let that rest a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll try it by hand from here. Oh yeah, it's not too bad at all. My impact's just tired. Could be a little battery. Look at that. We got it out. Okay, so the kit that I bought came with this 
plug to put in the exhaust manifold. This is a 14 millimeter hex, kind of like an Allen wrench. I don't have one of those. The biggest one I have is a 10 millimeter. And so I shopped all around town looking for a 14. And the only way that I could get one is if I bought a whole set of those kinds of sockets, which I already have a bunch. And so I don't want to go buy a set just to get one socket. The one store that I found that did have an individual socket, uh, they wanted like 16 or $17 for it. And this is like a one-time use kind of thing. I just don't see ever needing that again. So I came up with a different idea. I found a 14 millimeter bolt and that just fits right in there perfectly. So I put a 14 millimeter nut on the other side and tighten it down. And then a 14 millimeter socket fits on there and that'll tighten it down. Now, obviously if I ever need to remove this, I won't be able to loosen this. This nut will just unthread off of the bolt rather than loosening this. So if that ever needs to get done, I'll have to weld this together or go buy the right socket but I'm not expecting to have to remove this. So I'm just gonna use this. Okay, so I finally got the thread started. There's my little bolt set up there. Okay, that seems pretty tight. So where the EGR came off, we gotta plug this hole. So the kit that I have came with this gasket piece that goes over that, and then this plate that goes over the gasket to seal that up. Then it came with these three screws. I mean, one of them is just filling that hole right there. The other two hold the plate down. So we're gonna install that now. I cleaned this off with the rag just to get the grime off of there. So these bolts are bottoming out before they tighten down the plate. This is a inset right there. I'm wondering if I want to flip that over to add a little more thickness so that these bolts can bottom out or don't bottom out. I don't see the point of this one. Especially if it's not if it's just going to bottom out, I don't want to put it in there. Okay, so I'm going to tighten these two down. This is cast aluminum, so I really don't want to put a ton of ton of pressure. I don't want to tighten it too hard because I don't want to strip any threads. You just need to create a, a seal right there. It's just an air seal. So the next segment of this, I need to remove this, uh, this pipe here goes inside and there's four, uh, I guess, air injectors or something into the head. And those all need to come out. It's really difficult to reach in there. And so uh, I think that a lot of people take off the valve cover here. Well, that means I gotta take off all this stuff to get it out of my way. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is take off some of these air hoses that are just gonna be in the way. It's, uh, it's split here. So I'm pretty sure it was leaking all this oil. That's why there's that residue on there. So I took some photos of this stuff so I can remember where he, all these vacuum hoses reattach. 
just going to set them aside for now. Put them over there or something. So I don't want to remove the throttle cables from this point because this is a, a specific adjustment. So I'm just going to take the bracket off by re removing these two bolts. Okay, so that's loose. And now I just got to disconnect the cable. Come on. There. Okay, I got that off. Gonna stick it aside over there. And get that out of there. And then I should be able to just move that over. Shove it under the hood there to get it to stay. Okay. No, that was way easier. Okay. I'll just set this aside over here. Hey, look at all that room we got. That should be it. This should, yep, there we go. There we go. Okay. Well, I'm stuck off there, but it is. There we go. Okay. Ooh, look at all that. Well, that's the uh, top end of an engine with 338,000 miles on it. So I think whoever put the this uh, valve gasket on there might have used a sealant on the bottom side. There's some old stuff on there. So I had to work it loose first with a screwdriver just to kind of break it loose. And then now I'm just working around it, trying to peel it off gently so that I don't break the, the uh, gasket into pieces. And hopefully whatever gunk sealant they used, uh, you know, hopefully most of it peels off with the valve, old valve gasket. Okay, so I spent some time cleaning up the uh, gasket, the old gasket off of here. And, uh, and then there was a sealant on there, so I peeled all that off and uh, just used some brake cleaner on a rag to clean the surface of this so that this is ready for the new gasket and uh, I didn't spray I did not spray any brake cleaner in here uh, because there's seals and stuff that I don't want to destroy anyway the next part of our journey here is to remove these four injectors and uh, so we can turn these this nut right here will remove the the pipe that runs under there I think they call that the manifold and then there's a nut under here I'll get you a little closer this one that actually removes the injector itself now mine has a bunch of cooked oil down in the crack there uh that's all I mean it's all gunked up around in there you might be able to see it over on this one a little bit better uh it's really bad so I've been spraying little bits of brake cleaner on there and loosening it up and I'm, I'm we're just gonna see what I can do I have to get that out because the the plug goes down inside so we gotta we gotta get that out and we gotta get this all cleaned up 
So uh, we'll just take it one step at a time. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is turn these, and I actually broke these loose already. They were not very tight. Um, but you can see it's a 17, and uh, they it, it wasn't very hard to break them loose. Um, I'd like to just do them by hand now, but it's hard to get my fingers in there. So I gotta just use the wrench, I guess, which is just slow. Nobody likes doing it like this. Okay, so those are all loose now. And so now there's a bracket over here holding this pipe in. And I'm gonna work on taking that out. But I'll reposition the camera first. Okay, so this is hard to see from your angle, but basically I held it in here and then I grabbed this into the pipe and I just twisted it this way, counterclockwise, and the, and the uh, little nipples pulled out of the injectors. And uh, so now it's loose, and I can get it out like that. Now I can probably get rid of this bracket here by pulling those bolts. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the manifold thingy in there. And now I gotta pull these injectors out. And I just put the wrench on them, and they actually turned really easy. It wasn't very hard at all. But if I take them out like this, all that gunk that's in there is going to fall inside the hole, and I don't want that. So I need to get this clean around here, and then pull those out. So I'm going to spend some time putting a little brake cleaner on there, chipping at it with a little screwdriver, and vacuuming it out with a shop vac. But I won't do that on camera because that would be boring to watch. All right, I'm going to go ahead and remove one of these and see how easy it comes out and how much of a mess it makes. in here and get it yep got it and I'm gonna so I got it out there it is I'm gonna get my vacuum again okay so there's the plug and it's an allen head I found that the quarter inch actually fits a little more snugly than like a six millimeter I'm going to use the quarter. I sure am hoping that I can get this whole ratchet in there. I think I'll remove the ratchet for now and put it in by hand first. The kit I have came with this thread sealant. It's a high temperature thread sealant. So I'm just going to put a small amount all the way around the first threads there. Let's see if we can get it in there without making a mess. And then I'm actually just, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm just trying to spin it by hand. It's going in pretty well in there. It started to get a little more stiff. Let's see if we can fit this on there. Again, we're talking about a, an aluminum head, so I don't want to go too tight. It's squeaking at me, but it's not very tight. The, you know, the injectors that I pulled out were not super tight, so I'm just I'm not going to go any tighter than than that was. I'm kind of curious if these bottom out at any point. I think I'm just going to stop there. Okay, so I've got all the air injectors out, 
and I put the plugs in and we're done with that. So now we can replace the valve cover and start putting things back together. So this is the valve cover and I spent some time cleaning it up getting at least the gunk out of it and this is the the back of the engine here and this is where uh, one of the vacuum ports was. This was in there. Um, that's the rubber uh, gasket, I guess. It is hard and brittle. And and uh, this seems to have like some kind of valve in it because uh, I can't see through it. So anyway, I took it out. It has kind of a kind of a rattle. Uh, here's a new one. Sounds a little different, maybe less clogged. Uh, anyway, I got a new rubber grommet and a new, whatever that is, valve nipple thing. And I'm gonna put those in there. And uh, then anyway, I this is the other one. I cleaned that. The interesting thing about this is it seems to be like two layers. Uh, like there's a crack in here and there's two layers and there's little holes that give let air pass between them and uh, man all that was all caked up with stuff on the inside between these two layers so I used a lot of brake cleaner cleaning this and I don't even think I got it all but uh, hopefully it's better than it was so this is the gasket rubber gasket it slips inside the uh, valve cover here and then a buddy of mine says that I should put a little bit of RTV sealant on the corners. And so I've got this uh, black one minute gasket. This is supposed to be good stuff. And it basically, once you get it on there, it sets up so quick that you can drive the same day rather than waiting 24 hours. The problem here is that the gasket is so loose in here that I'm afraid it's when I turn this upside right side up so that I can put it on the truck on the engine it's it's just gonna fall out so I think what I need to do is put a little bit of gasket a uh, little bit of sealant under the gasket just to get this to stick in there I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to stick forever but I gotta do something to kind of get it to stick in there so I'm trying to prepare the area here to be able to get the valve cover in smoothly without moving things around and being all clumsy about it because I don't want the gasket to fall off and uh, the sealant to get dried as I'm messing around and I've only got a couple minutes really before it starts to harden up. And um, so anyway, one thing I did is, this is the difficult part here back in the back. I've got to get over the top of this stud and kind of, you know, hook this cover over the top of this. And this wiring harness thing was in my way. So what I did is down here, it was clipped on here. And so I disconnected it from the clip here. And that allowed, gave me some slack. I could lift it up here, gave me some slack so I could push this wire harness back behind this engine lift bracket. And I'm hoping this will make it easier to get the valve cover in there. I may also disconnect this hose because that is kind of in my way as well. So I think I can pull it off of here, pull it off of there and get that out of my way just so I can get in there more smoothly. Okay, and then these are the bolts that go in. Goes down inside that gasket. I'm gonna finger tighten it first. Okay, 
these these are not supposed to be torqued down too much. I think it's 78 inch pounds, which uh, isn't much. And I remember taking them off, and they they came off pretty doggone easy. So I'm gonna keep my hand close to the head of the wrench so that I'm not putting a lot of torque on it. Suppose if I had like a If I had like a palm ratchet, that'd probably be better. I think that seems pretty good to me. So now I can start putting things back together. Okay, so I got some new hose, uh, vacuum hose that is. Okay, and then I'm gonna remove these ones because they're in bad shape. Ooh. Oh. I got it, and I'm gonna replace them. Well, I think I've got everything back together. All the vacuum hoses plugged back in, the air intake. I think everything's buttoned up and done. Uh, here's all the, all the crap I took out of it. And uh, there is more room in here. This duct kind of hides the fact that I got a lot more room. <laughs> That's why it may go, I may take it off later. Um, but for now, there is a lot more room in here. You know, I've heard about guys trying to, you know, put a second battery in here or a compressor could fit in here now. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, what I'm mostly interested in is how it runs now. So let's start it up. It seems to be running really good. It is idling high. I'll show you the tachometer here. So it's, can't see that very well, but it, it's idling about 1100. Um, I read that that's pretty normal at first. The, the computer has to kind of relearn, so to speak, uh, that things are different, there's no, air pump and all that and so I think I'm gonna take it for a drive and uh, we'll see how it responds Well, it seems to be running great. Uh, it does feel a little more peppy, like I was hoping. It just seems like the engine is a little more free, like it can breathe better. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I stopped at a stoplight back there, and the idle went down to about 600, like it ought to. And so I think the computer is already catching on to whatever adjustments it has to make now that the air pump and all that stuff is in there 
So I think that's going to be no problem. Anyway, I think that was time well spent. I think my rig will run better. I'm curious how the how the fuel economy will be. We'll see. That'll take some time to figure out. <laughs>